Thanks, Dan. It's great to be here with you and also with Neil Gagan from the AFP uh, with this very, very important announcement. We know that organised criminals are becoming more adept, better organised, uh, more savvy in the use of technology than ever before. Uh, and that means when there are big pots of money, when there are important programs that the government has put into place, we need to make sure that those programs and the users of it are compliant. Uh, it is true that historically large pots of money like this one in the NDIS have attracted organised crime. We have seen that in the past. And the message to those considering doing the same with the NDIS is you have nowhere to hide. Because just as you are trying to uh, rip off every Australian and genuine, complainants, uh, genuine claimants uh, for the NDIS, uh, you uh, will have nowhere to hide because we will use technology, we will use big data, we will look for unusual transactions and clusters of transactions in a way where we can now uh, using the sort of technologies that are available. Uh, now, the truth is uh, that whenever someone tries to rip off an important government program like this, where, as Dan says, we we, as Australians, believe we should be generous to those genuine claimants for the NDIS. Uh, whenever people do that, they are ripping off the genuine claimants and they are ripping off every Australian taxpayer. Uh, and that is absolutely unacceptable. We won't stand for it and we will make sure uh, that people are brought to account if they do damage to this all-important program for the government. And on that note, I will uh, ask Thanks, Neil to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. I'll say at the outset that the Australian Federal Police is committed to working with government agencies to fight serious fraud and bring those to account that are, try to attack the revenue of the Commonwealth. Um, I also say that we're well positioned through the Fraud and Anti-Corruption Centre, working with a number of other government agencies, including 12 departments across the Commonwealth, that we can work together to learn from the lessons of the past to ensure that we put those lessons to good use, to ensure the integrity of the NDIS going forward to make sure that the revenue that is being given by the taxpayers is used in, in accordance with the way it was meant to in relation to the scheme. Now, we know that organised criminals will target this scheme like they have in previous schemes, but as the ministers have both said, um, the AFP will work with our Commonwealth partners to bring those people to account and work with the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions to prosecute those people in accordance with the law. And I know through previous experiences that the penalties that are given to those people that commit fraud against the Commonwealth in an organised fashion do receive quite severe penalties through the court processes. Um, we look forward to the establishment of the task force. We will second a very senior officer to establish the task force. And whilst uh, he will be responsible for basically putting in place governance and ensuring that the integrity the, that's already in place um, is, is fully enforced, um, I rest assured that when a serious matter of fraud is uncovered by the task force, it will be referred to the Australian Federal Police and we will put in place our full powers and our full capabilities to bring those responsible for the criminality to justice. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. This is, any questions? By government standards, a fairly large uh, fraud control <coughs> task force. We would assume commensurate with the risk. Uh, other episodes that you've highlighted ran to hundreds of millions of dollars on family daycare. So what's the assessed scale of risk or even fraud known to be happening on the NDIS right now? So at this stage, uh, the fraud known to be happening is minimal. But as you say, the risk there is, is quite large. This is an incredibly generous scheme. Uh, we spent $8 billion on it last year. That will grow to $22 billion uh, by 2021-22. And then in the out years to, to 2028, uh, will grow to $27 billion. So when you have a large sum of money like that, uh, it will attract, in particular, organised crime. So what we're doing is taking risk mit mitigation measures here. Uh, we know that we'll, it sadly will attract criminals. So we're doing everything we can to ensure from the outset, as the scheme grows, uh, we are onto this and we are putting those criminal organisations on notice. As I said, you come after the NDIS, we will come after you. What 
Uh, look, a a as I said, so far the, the known instances are minimal. But we do know, and, and maybe I'll get Neil to, um, to, to comment on this, that where organised criminals see an opportunity, they will seek to exploit it. And that's why we are putting the significant resources, 100 personnel, onto this, because we want to ensure, in particular, as the seam grows over the next couple of years, and it's very important this next stage of the rollout of the NDIS, that those organised criminal gangs uh, will not be able to get a footing. And this is what this is all about. Now, Neil, would you like to, to comment on a couple of things? Thanks, Minister. Here. Look, I, I think it's fair enough to say that when the National Disability Insurance Agency was stood up, there, there was an acknowledgement that there would be potential fraud on the system, and immediately uh, they started working with the Fraud and Anti-Corruption Centre to try and plug those gaps. Now, there is intelligence to suggest that there already has been some fraud that's taken place, but it is quite minimal, as the Minister said. Um, there are ongoing investigations in relation to that particular activity, and obviously I'm not in a position to comment any further on that. Can you say how many investigations? Oh, I'm not going to go into those details. What sort of criminal elements are you looking at, though? When you talk about organised crime trying to get into these government programs, are we talking local crime or are we talking foreign criminals trying to access this system? Where exactly are the concerns for the AFP? Well, I might ask Minister Taylor to talk about the actual integrity of the system from an identity perspective, but, but certainly what we're seeing is local criminals. Um, and we see them move between schemes. Now, family daycare fraud was something that we saw them in previously, um, and we know that they're sniffing around, if you like, this particular uh, new, newly established scheme. So they're local, they're, but they're organised. And we call them organised for a reason, is that, is that they identify gaps in systems and working across Commonwealth, it's our job working with departments to plug those gaps. And that's what this task force will do. Not only will it bring people to account, but will also work to plug gaps to ensure the integrity of the system to make sure that the money that should be going to the right people goes to the right people. Minister, you want to put on this? Yeah. So we are, we are seeing increasingly adept criminal activity uh, around government programs. We've seen it for some time. Family daycare is one that's been mentioned a number of times. Uh, and it is absolutely crucial for that reason that we are similarly adept. And so the work the AFP and others are doing to enhance our ability to identify unusual transactions, unusual activity is absolutely crucial. Uh, the key point here is that we, we know that these criminals are using technologies in ways that they haven't in the past. Uh, and we're seeing that whether it's in drugs or fraud, uh, both private and public sector fraud. This, this is a clear and recurring pattern and it's why we are upgrading our capabilities. It's why we are putting teams like this in place to go after those, those criminals. Um, it's true that more and more of the organised crime you're seeing in Australia has international links of some form or other. There's no doubt about that. Uh, that is a very, very clear and recurring pattern. Does that extend, has it in other cases of fraud, extended to repatriating money to foreign fighter elements in well, look, what we do know is that um, laundering the money from fraudulent activity is, is, again, a sophisticated activity and it's something we are crawling all over. The, the fantastic work that Austrac has done in uh, recent months is testimony to the hard work that has gone into uh, tracking down money laundering activity. Um, and it is absolutely true that that money laundering activity often involves international transactions. Uh, we're onto that, um, we're dealing with it, um, and it is, it is an effective way of driving compliance and uh, and picking up fraudulent activity. How many occasions, though, say in the last 12 months or two years, have you been able to identify where cases have been, uh, money has been sent back to foreign fighters? Uh, look, uh, uh, Neil, Neil may want to respond to that, but we're not going to go into uh, we're not going to go into details on in individual investigations. Yeah. Are there investigations on that front ongoing, Neil? Um, Look, investigations in relation to what occurs in the Middle East continue to be ongoing, but the, the conflict over there is slightly different to what it was in 2014. Um, but as the Minister Taylor has rightly pointed out, Austrac have done some incredible work here in the last 18 months, two years particularly, in relation to tracking money around the globe. And we work very closely with our international law enforcement partners to where there is suspicion activity that we work collectively with them. Um, I've travelled to the Middle East just recently, working with our partners there to ensure we have better systems in place to work and, and signed an MOU with the Dubai Police, for instance, to make sure we work more closely on these type of issues. Um, international law enforcement corporations that are all-time high across all criminal areas. Um, but we'll continue to, we continue—we know we need to do more. 
uh, because the criminals that we work with, or work against I should say, uh, don't have any boundaries, they don't have any laws and we need to make sure that we're nimble, that we're innovative and that we continue to work collaboratively to bring these people to justice. But just to clarify, is there a, is there a concern though that the NDIS could be a threat from international organised crime? There's nothing, no intelligence to suggest that at this stage. Can you give us some examples of the types of fraud that this task force will be uh, looking for? Well, identity fraud, people putting in fraudulent claims are probably the two that come to mind immediately, but our organised criminals are fairly sophisticated. They'll be looking at coming up with new ways to actually defeat our algorithms that we put in place to defeat these types of fraud. So I think anything you can think of um, is the sort of activity that they'll come up against us. Um, so we need to be, as I said, we need to think outside the box a bit to come up with ideas to prevent fraud from occurring. Minister T, you would be familiar with many uh, users of the system uh, tearing their hair out over administrative uh, reviews of their plans and uh, actually having trouble getting what they need from the scheme. It almost beggars belief that uh, someone else can come in through other means and scoop out large amounts of money. How do you reconcile these two experiences? Uh, well, um, obviously the scheme is transformational. Uh, it, it's not perfect, but it is, is changing lives. We've already seen 46,000 participants who previously were not getting services from either the Commonwealth or the State Government now getting services. Uh, the rollout is continuing. We're continuing to make changes to improve uh, the participants' um, involvement in the scheme and, and some of those trials which have taken place, which will be rolling out over the coming months, um, have really changed the nature of the scheme. For instance, when it comes to personal planning, uh, there will be face-to-face -face meetings rather than what was previously being done over the phone. So we are looking for improvements the whole time. But what the Australian people, and I know speaking with people with a disability who are participants in the scheme, they want to know that every dollar has, is being spent on them to improve the services that are provided to them. And, and this is what this announcement is all about, ensuring that those people who want to get access to, that, to the money, which is there for people with a disability, will not get access to it. Organised criminals, we will come after you if you come after the NDIS. Let's be very, very clear. All right. Thanks very Thank much, you. everyone. Cheers.